Come on. Hello all, it's Monica. We are creeping closer and closer to summer, to more daylight, to breaks for some of us, time with family and friends. But we are also, don't we know it, creeping closer and closer to the elephant in the room, or better yet, the red blue donkey elephant creature slumped on the calendar. Yes, I'm talking about the 2024 election. Some of you plan to vote for Trump. Some of you plan to vote for Biden. Some of you plan to vote for someone else on the ballot or wish you could meaningfully vote for someone who isn't on the ballot or you don't know what box you're going to check on that ballot at all. But no matter who you are or what you plan to do with that beautiful right to make that choice, every day it seems harder to look away from the big day. Which brings me to the heart of this week's beat, a chorus of voices, your voices, from all across the political spectrum. People sharing just some of the concerns and questions you're wrestling with as we approach November 5th. Listening to these might be easy for you, or it might be hard, but I invite you voice by voice to notice how you react. Just notice. Then ask yourself, What's on your mind about the election? What worries you, if anything, about the whole storm of it? And is there a question you want more of your neighbors and fellow voters to think about and maybe find a way to act on? And look, the way I see it, I'm not here, we're not here to stress about the election or to avoid it. We are here to listen, though, and to help, I hope, more of you listen and talk to each other. My name is Harry. I'm an independent or call myself a civic populist. I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. In this election season, I've been thinking about how the people or the citizens are absent from the discussion. It's about whether to elect Donald Trump or Joe Biden, but the people are absent. Unlike the Obama campaign of 2008 or the George Bush campaign of 2000. A question I would say, how do we bring back citizens and citizenship into this election? My name is Vicki Eileen Red. I'm from Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. I'm 61 years old. In the upcoming election, I'm really concerned about the fact that 70% of Americans, as far as I've heard, were not interested in a Biden-Trump election again, and here we are. I am very concerned about uh, Biden's age and Kamala Harris as president. My name is Theo Eileen Blue. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm 35 years old. As we head into the election, I've been thinking a lot about if there will be violence or threats or intimidation of voters and poll workers. Will there be violence after the election if Trump loses, like on January 6th? And if he wins, will he push the limits on democratic norms and limits or checks on his power? My question is, how do we recognize and respond to what I'm going to call a democratic emergency? Hi, my name is Randy Freeman. I live in New York and I uh, lean red. I have had two recent incidents when people are so angry at the notion of Donald Trump running for president that they were seething in blind rage and have stated pretty much that they don't want to be part of any organization where they may have to be around a Trump supporter. They hate them, not just the politician, but the supporters. My question is, how do we respond to the increasing anger that just seems to be building by the day? It feels like a tsunami and maybe nothing will stop it. My name is Clark. I lean red, I lean blue, really depending upon the issue. As we head into what seems certain to be a divisive election season, I'm looking for ways to unify. I spent a number of years working in the field of philanthropy. The greatest successes had little to do with money. They had everything to do with relationships. Our politics, unfortunately, is not organized this way. My question, how do we reconstruct or rediscover the bonds that connect us to one another. Hi, my name is Corey. I lean blue and I'm from Portland, Oregon, and I'm 47 years old. As we head into this election, I've been thinking a lot about how to kindly engage when a loved one makes a polarizing or outright insulting statement in a group text. 
I'm in a red family and generally I ignore these text messages. My question is, how can I respond in a depolarizing manner within the context of a text message? Thank you. My name is Chris. I'm a moderate with more leaning towards conservative. I'm from Texas and I'm 71. In the upcoming election, what I'm most worried about is what's happening to the middle. So I guess if I had to wrap this into a question, it would be how do I successfully find a way to fit in and select candidates when our candidates seem to be so extreme on both sides of uh, their parties? My name is Terry. Eileen Blue. I'm from Traverse City in the beautiful state of Michigan. As we head into the election, I've been thinking about all that goes into the voting process and all the hardworking professionals and volunteers that make that happen. How can we let people know our intentions are honorable, that we work together side by side all night long, and we're from different political parties and we have differing beliefs but we're united in the knowledge that voting is important to all of us. Thank you. This is just one small slice of the worries and curiosities so many of you sent in when we asked how this election year was sitting with you. Here are some of the other questions you sent us. How can we focus on voting for rather than voting against? How do we encourage people to think for themselves rather than following a tribe? Is there a time when dialogue is unhelpful? How do we know when we've reached it? How do I deal with misinformation presented to me by friends and family? How can I have civil conversations with Trump supporters when I see them as duped and deluded? How do we stop liberals from destroying the country? How do we avoid a civil war? How do you continue a debate with unruly, loud, unreasonable people, especially in a large family? How do we encourage real conversations instead of toxic, polarizing conversations for members of our congregations? How do you bravely and kindly engage when a loved one makes an assumption about people's beliefs? How can I talk to people about the threats I see without sounding defensive and paranoid? How do any of the red or blue candidates bring this country together? How can voting be promoted in a way that's truly motivating? How do you handle the fear? There are so many answers and no final answers to any of these questions. As for the best answers, I think they'll be the ones that come out when we're with people who don't think exactly the way we do, who see things differently, even on that ballot. So if you find agreement, any agreement, on questions like these, when there's some of that friction, that tension that we have a long tradition of embracing here in the US of A, hold on to it, spread the word, and check in with us. Because the conversations we've got lined up for you this season, oof, they don't despair. They don't hold back. They've got some brilliant strategies. I've learned so much from each one. And if any of the concerns you heard this episode speak to you, come back join in. If the citizens, as Henry put it in the clip, are absent from so many election discussions out there, rest assured, you won't be absent here. That's all for today. And stay tuned. We will be back in a couple weeks with, drum roll please, our first full-length episode in this new season of A Braver Way. Take heart, everyone. Till next time. Thank you to our sponsor, USA Facts, for supporting A Braver Way. I'm your host, Monica Guzman. Reach out anytime at abraverway at braverangels.org. A 
big special thanks to Ben Karen for his help this episode and to everyone who sent in their questions. A Braver Way is a production of Braver Angels. And if you want to come together with a real-life, balanced group of liberals, conservatives, and independents from all over the country who are ready to take on these questions and more ahead of the election, there is still time to join me and hundreds of your fellow Americans in Kenosha, Wisconsin, June 27th through 29th for the Braver Angels Convention. Learn more and apply at braverangels.org slash 2024 dash convention.